Put the gun down before you kill someone. Teenage Girls Diary. Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Dollar Store Drive-In. I'm your host, Laura. I'm Joel. And we're the Newly Duds. We are. If this is your first time watching, this is a half-hour chat show about um, a movie that we purchased at the dollar store. Yep. Or somewhere that's less than $5. So that's just in case, you know, you never know what's going to happen. And uh, these were all thankfully dollar twenty five purchases. And if you hear uffing and barking and snarling and whatnot we in the do background, record this in our own home. This is not a studio, believe it or not. Yeah. And we uh, got uh, three rambunctious puppies right now. So yes. So, yeah. If you hear some barking, maybe some hacking or coughing. Strange noises. It's got to be the dogs. It might so. be spot under the stairs or it could be one of our three dogs yes or our fish yeah so right. what did we watch last week <sighs> so boy we got a lot to talk about um well so last week we just settled on uh this fine film over here the marshes um which was directed by one mr roger scott who primarily before this had only ever directed any like short films so that can kind of be a good thing or a bad thing, depending on, you know, yes, how, how things go. Um, I mean, if you look at something like Lights Out, uh, that was originally just a short film. Yeah, I like short films. Sometimes those horror films are, yeah, very effective. Lights Out was creepy. It, it, yeah, up the until short that, film. that yeah. last moment. For some reason, the creature itself was a little kind of... Yeah. There's another one... Um, I want to say it was called Smile, maybe not not yeah. based on the movie we just saw recently, but it was a short film. Yeah, it was like a creepy clown thing in the kitchen. That carrot creature design was pretty friggin' terrifying. The birch. Have you ever seen the birch? I don't think I've seen the birch. I like the birch. We are married, but we had our lives before we got married, so we uh, we're still catching up on all the things we've seen before. What? You had a life before me? Oh, I know I did. Yes. But yeah. It's um, better life now. Yeah. So, anyway, yeah. we watched The Marshes. Yes. I was excited about this film because it is a Shudder original. In 2018. Um, and I thought, you know, for sure that it would be an interesting... I mean, typically with the Shudder films that we've seen, um, we're generally pretty happy as far as the quality is concerned. Yeah. Um, Scare Package, for example, phenomenal. Uh, got Joe Bob Briggs in the film. Excellent. Um, but, you know... It's like any of these streaming services, outside of Tingler, of course, um, that, you know, you kind of have some that, some that hit and some that miss. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to read what this was about, so that way we can kind of recap that. Um, I think Joel's also going to run a clip here pretty soon about it, so then we can start actually talking about the film. We'll give you the trailer. Yes. Um, so the premise of the movie is when a group of young microbiologists head deep into the Australian wilderness to test water samples, they inadvertently enter the domain of a mysterious local. As they travel through the marshes, he stalks their every move, determined to kill anyone who enters his land. Reading this after watching this doesn't, it, no. I mean, it's kind of accurate. I mean, let me ask you this, people. If you're going to put in a movie, whether it's streaming or it's in your collection or you're going to go to the theater, I mean, the first thing that I always look for is that there's three microbiologists that are testing water. That's that's key. Like, if that's not in the food <laughs> film, I'm out. I'm telling you. Yeah, I'm out. Sure. Um, and <laughs> there was a lot of microbiology going on. I don't think a that's a lot. Word, but there was a lot. A lot of biology. And not like on a know, micro level playing doctor biology. There's a little bit of that, but it was like yeah, like a lot of cellular images, like up close, like looking through a microscope kind of thing. Yeah, lots of little like shots of microbes, of bugs, and yep. bugs. There was a very nice shot of a stampede of um, pill bugs slash. Uh, he loves him some pill bugs, and that made me very happy. Yeah, he was like, oh, I actually like went to the kitchen to get a snack and I went and he was like oh my god look at all the pill bugs so he rewound it and made me watch that uh particular it, it may be a screensaver on my phone now yes 
But it, it should be. Yes. Um, she doesn't quite get my fascination with him. But he so loves cute. them. Like roly polies yes. is another term for them. Yeah, that's what he said. It's like a stampede of roly polies. Yeah. Yeah, it was very cute. What else did you notice? Uh, yes. Yes, lots of that. Do we want to roll the little trailer thing, like, real quick? So they. What's this? That is the uh, lots of weird <laughs> vegetation shots. Is that what you're talking about? Like when they're running? Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of close ups and, and far aways, and I know I'm making things up tonight. Uh, lots of shots of. A lot of vegetation, weeds. lots of weeds. When someone's running, you're not actually seeing anyone running, you're just seeing. Someone running, like, with the camera against, like, a field of reeds. Kind of like Bob Seger. They were running against the wind, I guess is the best way to put it. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, let's, let's, let's play the trailer. Yeah, let's do the trailer, and then when we come back, we'll talk a little bit more about it. We got more to say. Yeah. So is there, like, any chance of getting malaria at he? <laughs> what? Okay, they're, they're mosquitoes. It's, it's possible. Yeah, the real world thing, Matilda, happened not far from here. Hey, what do you mean real? Come on, there's a whole song about it. Hmm. I mean, it's a bit suspect, don't you reckon? I mean, whoever killed themselves over a sheep. Yeah, I guess so. Ever since then, the malignant ghost of the swagman has haunted remote waterways, whistling his mournful song, and tucker bagging anybody unlucky enough to stumble into his watery domain. Nice. Don't say I didn't warn you. I know someone's out there. It's just a story, right? Right? No, 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 please, please, no! What did you think of that little uh, trailer snippet? I always feel like trailers are always the best parts of everything. So misleading. It used to be back in the day, like in the 70s and even in the 80s, the trailers would be like four minutes long and they basically gave you the entire plot. Nowadays, there's a lot of heavy editing and yeah, they, they tend to kind of... I mean, they want to get you to see the movie. But... uh you know, I, I, I'm not into the swag man. I don't know if they were going for a uh, franchise thing. I don't remember. I don't remember if they used that in the trailer, but that's what they call him in the movie because he's a transient and it's an Australian thing. It's an Australian movie, so all of it is like you know some of their their terminology yeah. and stuff. We had to look up what a swag man was and uh, what was the other squatter. Yeah. I mean, I feel pretty well versed in my Australian slang, but I did not. I know what a swag man was. That one? I was like, what's a swag yeah, man? Yeah, it's like a... It's like a thing. It's be the swag man. <laughs> oh, wait, I need a bindle. You gotta have a bindle. Yeah. If you're a swag man. And then do a little weird jig. And then a little jiggity jig. Mm-hmm. You know? Yep. Yeah. Um, I'm just gonna come out and say it. It was the snooziest movie I've ever watched in my entire life. Like, it was so boring. I wrote down boring. We... we, we try to maintain a a you know veneer of unknown when we watch films we, we don't like to know too much about them in advance because part of the fun is is finding out as you go but i gotta say when the first act of violence in a horror film isn't until about 50 minutes in i love a slow burn i'll watch a movie where nothing happens that for two hours and nothing ever does happen and i'll be happy but how long was this movie was i mean it was like an hour and a half yeah it was, so it was you're talking about the entire movie with nothing happening just microbiology and people like sitting in the woods like they told the story there was a weird weird trippy dream that she had yep there's a little bit of uh that could have went somewhere that could have been scary you couldn't tell what was going on like the camera work was like sh- like shaky and like that is a good very point. like pan like fast like moving 
shots and like dimly lit so you couldn't see. Yeah. There was like a, a sex scene or love scene in it and it what did you say? It looked like you were trying to watch porn on a um scrambled TV back in the day. He's not kidding. I, I, I didn't you could do hear that. noises, but like it, literally there was no even like hint of skin or hint of light or anything like that. It was just terrible. It wasn't even like a, a, a you know, like an exposed ankle, you know? It, even for like the 20s, it was pretty tame. Yeah. And and I'm not even sure that that actually happened. I mean, it, they kind of, I guess, cleared it up during the day, but the, the main character has a lot of uh, issues with phasing in and out of kind of like dream yeah. things. So it was a little hard to say for sure. There wasn't very good chemistry between the actors either. Like I didn't no. feel like, like I didn't care about any of the actors. So I didn't really care if they did die or not die. Um, I mean, the, when when the guy you care about the most is the, the gas station attendant that has like a line. And the only reason I liked him is because I thought he had a funny name and he looked kind of... Comerman or something. Yeah, yeah, kind of. He looked kind of interesting. Like he had an interesting face. But beyond that... He was in it for two seconds. And Joel was, like, so excited. He's like, oh my gosh, we get to meet the character or whatever. And and literally he was like, here's your money back. Don't go out in the marshes. Or, no, he didn't even say that. (laughs) The marshes have a death curse. (laughs) That's not even... A death curse. Not even an Australian accent. No, he was totally, like, white, white, bread, American guy with a normal accent. He... He was non-regional. No, no, I don't. I remember. was like, what? <laughs> I don't remember. Um, like, am I not thinking of the same movie? Um, however, to give it one one positive note, it looked nice. And he likes the Australian accents. Well, he I, he said that they were Chef's Kiss. I, I, well, my dear friends, is Australian. Was Australian, but is. I mean, he will always will be. He always yeah. will be. Yes. Yes. Uh, that's the second I mentioned him last week too. Um, well, and I love New Zealanders, you know, they're, they're neighbors and they would made some New Zealand based jokes that I understood. Uh, but anyway, they, it looked really nice. Like the, the, the cinematography was well done. Yeah. Um, the locations were, were pretty for the most part. It just felt like somebody was like, I'm going to take a little bit of this, going to take a little bit of that. I actually and never like do anything with it. There was, the, yeah, exactly. There, and the one note I wrote about that was that it was like an Aussie Candyman meets Mick Taylor of Wolf Creek with a little bit of Jeepers Creepers and the Blair Witch thrown in for fun. But none of the good parts. It's just like the idea of those films, but like nothing came to fruition. Like no. it was like not scary, not thrillery. There was parts where like. I don't even understand why they sh- set the shot up like this. Uh-oh. Like there was so when you finally do get to some action, it's a mystery as to why this guy even showed up. There was like a story that was told about the swag man or whatever, yeah. and then he w- he does this whistle, and so then you start hearing this whistle. Yeah, and so you're thinking, oh shit's go- going down, right? Stuff's going down. <laughs> Stuff's going down now, and uh. It doesn't. And then, like, a couple of things happen, and you're like, oh, okay, things are, like, going, like, it's going to be scary or something's going to happen. And then, like, on the cover, for instance, there's a man hanging from a tree from his feet, right? So you're that watching happens. it, and you're like, ah, okay, so this happens, right? Like, there's, like, you know. And these people run after him. Because he's naked and, like, getting pulled by a big rope. And so they, of course, run after the naked, bloody man, like, being pulled by a rope by some mystery person on the other side. (laughs) And, um... Bailey agrees. He does agree. (laughs) Shh. (laughs) So, uh, you know, you're, 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 they're, they're running, and then they get into this big clearing where the tree is, and the guy's hanging there... And nothing, nowhere to hide at all. It's like, yeah. at all. And they're they're like, oh my gosh, this man's hanging from a tree. What do we do? And then they're like, oops, I think the guy that is gonna kill him is coming. And and they just hide behind a twig. Like it is the like least 
inconspicuous area to like hide. I'm like, what? Why? And I mean, you could forgive that, but that's the it theme happened of the movie. Every time. Yeah, the guy's out in the middle of the. The middle of there's no marsh. It's like it's just water, maybe, but like the marshes, like the the weeds and the reeds and stuff are like on the sides, and this tree is in the middle. What? I just like that was so disturbing to me. That that in itself was the disturbing part of the film. Just like they wouldn't see each other. Yeah, it's just And they're walking through water and crunchy uh foliage and things and yeah, the guy's like, standing Ooh. right there and we're not sure they, they they gave you some backstory but the lore about the character they don't really say it looks like he might be blind but you can't tell. Looks like he might have some sort of funky hair thing going on, but you can't tell. Uh, you never really see his face, but you kind of do. He's kind of a cannibal, but he kind of isn't. He's just kind of this... I don't know what is happening. And without and then, yeah, without giving away the ending, just in case any of you do actually want to see this, again, I'm okay with kind of, you know, endings where there's no ending, but I felt like this needed something to end it, and it didn't. It didn't give us a, it did a not. satisfying ending. No. Of You're like, any kind. are people dead or not? Is she maybe the person or not? Like, I just, it's troubling. The swag man had no swag. Yeah. It was very sad. Neither did any of the other characters. It, it made me sad. I, and when we got done, like, watching the film, I looked over at Joel and I was like, did you write dumb? And- Literally you probably wrote. can't see it from here, but dumb. I wrote dumb, and she wrote dumb on hers. And <laughs> we're pretty forgiving. We like to watch. He he's good, way bad. more forgiving than any person I've ever met in my entire life. Like he gives everyone a shot. He like Rebecca Black. You celebrate her whole catalog. Her entire catalog. The Friday song, you know, like the, he even likes that song. Like. Yeah. And I stuff. apologize if that is if that is your thing. It trigger. is also his thing. So I watch, you know, shot on video horror movies. Uh, you know, unironically, I love you know whatever uh, anything. I'll give it a chance. And I yeah, have weird taste. But you know, this just was an exercise in futility. Is probably the the best way to really kind of. I hope that whoever made this film learned what not to do. And, like, maybe they'll make something better in the future. I mean, if they can keep up the cinematography and the basic, like, structure and then just write a good script with, you know, somebody to edit it a little bit tighter. Action. More action. Something. They they could have something really great. But right now... Dumb. It's like eating a McRib sandwich. Some people like McRibs. Right. And some people like this movie, but... Do they? The, I mean, are there people? Based on the reviews I saw, that's about 50-50. Are there people? Maybe 60-40. Really? Everybody somewhere, that, you know, I that said is it last week, thing. somebody's favorite movie, and that's, somebody somewhere is like, The Marsh's Man, have you seen that? Stan's not even in it, but it's still, it's still good. Stan Marsh? Yeah. That's all I keep hearing when I hear it. I'm, whenever I hear The Marshes, I'm imagining the Marsh family from South Park. It's just a thing that keeps happening. Randy. And Randy, yeah. So, all right. On a scale, this is like our, you know, we. I'm sure you probably know where we're going with this anyways, but on a scale of one to five uh, amoebas, because it was microbiology. There was a lot of microbiology going on. Yes, we'll say amoebas. Oh, yeah. Also, what was with him sniffing? He was, like, sniffing everything. That's the other reason we thought he might be blind. Oh, right. Yeah, we did think he was going to be blind, the, yeah. the swag man, because of the sniffing. Yeah. yeah. So, okay, so one out of five amoebas. Um, you're probably going to be like, really? But just for the cinematography alone, that aspect of it, the, the that, I want to give it a one and a half. Otherwise, I really feel like. Can I give it a half of an amoeba? This is our show. We can give it whatever you want. I'm giving it a half because they at least made a movie. (laughs) You tried. You got it. Toyota? Produced. Oh. And released. We purchased it. Yep. 
You you did something. I mean, they, that's more than we've done. We've never made an entire film and had it released by a major <laughs> streaming service that we respect. Yeah. And had it sold in stores and then discounted to a lower So rate. I'm going to give you a half of an amoeba for that. Good yeah. job. Shutter for releasing that. Beware what lurks beneath. Beneath, beneath what? what? <laughs> Beware Just what sadness. lurks beneath. Yeah, there was nothing. There was nothing in the marsh. Like you, you, that's a very that makes it sound like there's some sort of like environmental threat. No, just an overweight guy in a trench coat with a little stabby thing eating, that whistles and yeah, sniffs people. people, sniffing and eating. That's what I do on the weekend. Yeah. Well, luckily, Joel has a uh, a pick of the week that he would like to also. Um, tell everybody about instead of watching the marshes and this one is a, is a no-brainer i actually mentioned it last week and i'm i i thought i thought about it and i'm it's like reminiscent. you know yeah, i just this. i gotta stick with my guns it's 2005's wolf creek uh written and directed by greg mclean who's done the sequel the show uh he did rogue which is a fantastic alligator movie if you've never seen it or is it crocodile i think it's an alligator um wolf creek was amazing wolf creek is it's I saw hard it to watch in the times, theater. But oh, yeah. Yeah. And it's the very... second one is very much like if House of a Thousand Corpses and Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2 had a baby. But John Jarrett is, is amazing as Mick Taylor. And um, so if you've never seen it, be prepared to have a little bit of a, a steel plated stomach for some of it. But it is so well done that it's it makes this look like. It makes it look like the marshes. It makes it look like you're doing microbiology. Well, if you like microbiology, then maybe that's a good thing. Yeah, this was a rough week. But it's like I don't have much to say about this movie because it's so dang, like, dull and yeah. boring. But if you do want a bit of good news, mm -hmm. there was an announcement this week, uh, and we will be a part of Castle Chaos Multicon in Oregon, Illinois at the Stronghold. If you're in the Midwest, or if you want to travel to the Midwest at the end of April, so it was April... 3rd? 4th? We'll put it on the screen. April, isn't it 29th? It's sometime. It's at the end. We'll, we'll, have a th we'll have a thing here on the big on your big screen, or if you're watching it on your phone, wherever you're watching it, we'll have an image right here that will show you exactly the dates. Yeah, it's the and end of April. You can look it up. There's a Facebook page. Um, you know, shoot us a message at contact at thenewlydeads.com. It's a huge convention. Yeah. So there's um, video gaming, tabletop gaming, um, uh, curiosities, like an oddities kind of thing. Um, there's pro wrestling, convention. horror convention, comic, books. comic. Yeah, I, I said that right. Comic books. No, I don't know. Yeah, live video music. games, live music. Role um, games, vendors games. galore. Uh, we are actually part of it. So, uh, believe it or not, like Joel and I like to create um, art and stuff like that. Or like, you know. I've seen some of our work at the beginning and the end of this. Uh, he's very artsy. I'm very craftsy. No. Um, so we make a good I, team. Let's put it there. Yeah. Like I do some py pyrography. I like wood burning stuff and uh, painting like ghosts and stuff on them. And we do have a website, uh, thenewlydeads.com. You can check us out there as well. Um, but yeah, uh, I highly recommend coming to the Castle, Castle Chaos, Multicon, Chaos Multicon at the Stronghold in Oregon, Illinois. And it's a castle. It's an actual it's, it's castle. A, it's an actual castle in, in a small, uh, quaint little Illinois town. Um, and we will be there. And also, um, if you like what you see here and you want to see the prior episodes of Dollars for a Drive-In or any of our other shows we've done, Food Fight or uh, Sinister Snacks or any of the other things that we're doing and have done, uh, you can go to our YouTube page, at the Newly Deads, you know, youtube.com backslash at the Newly Deads, and you can find us. What do we got? We still got time? Yeah. We still got time. Okay. <laughs> it's hard to tell. You know, we've got a half an hour slot and I don't want to go push it over the limb and have to edit anything out. So we do have one more bit of business we have to attend to before we roll out into the streets to get some food because we're hungry. Mm -hmm. Which is mm -hmm. next week's film. Yes. So we have a back catalog of dollar store picks that we've gotten, which we're going to continue to update. 
And maybe at some point we'll accept submissions from people. I don't know. Yeah. As long as you found it somewhere where it was, you know, under You can $5. contact us at contact at thenewlydeads.com. And if you have some movies that you want to recommend to us, please We're, we, hook us up. It. Or if, uh, if you made a movie and you want us to watch it. As long as it's under five dollars to, to buy it. Yeah, I promise you, we won't be as harsh as we were on the marsh. <laughs> uh, the marsh is marsh. Uh, so what we did was we asked our uh, lovely lady friend Google to um, pick a number between one and thirty-five. I believe is where we at in our current count for films. She picked the number twenty, which is. Oh, yeah, The Mermaid's Curse. I'm so excited about The Mermaid's Curse. Which... <sighs> can, I look, can I look at it? Please do. We... Well, I saw a movie, uh, I want to say <laughs> three years ago, four years ago, called Killer Mermaid, which was not very good. Um, I've already got a possible suggestion for a better movie than this, because I'm guessing this one is not going to be fantastic. Mm. I could be wrong. It could yeah. be another Ouija room. That's, like, this related. But, oh, um, it could be another Ouija room. Ouija room? So cheesy. My, my kid started watching and ended up, ended up watching like a half an hour of I think we watched the whole thing. Minutes. No, I didn't quite get all the way oh. through. But I, I went ahead and did a deep dive on Ooh. the actors and uh, director and watched a bunch of their other films. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. I'm excited about The Mermaid's Curse. So before we... Uh, head out of here do you want to give him just the, the broad yeah. strokes here so the front cover says her song is alluring her kiss is deadly oh like lita ford uh yes it says after the discovery of an illicit affair a journalist fail oh false not fails <laughs> falls in love with a <laughs> seductive fail. <laughs> you fail a journalist falls in love with a seductive sultry and young mermaid that he meets on the beach oh. infatuation turns into obsession as he gets drawn in by her powers the more he falls for her, the more he will learn of the dangers of falling in love with a siren. I am, uh, yeah. It's not rated. Is it a made-for-TV movie again? Is it? I hope it's not one of the, the Beast, what was it? It's not one of the Beast ones. I don't know any of these actors. Well, we're going to find out, and we're going to report back when we do. Um, I'm just hoping that somewhere in this film there's a Dinglehofer. Champ Dog Films. What's a Dinglehoffer? The Little Mermaid? Have you never seen The Little I've Mermaid? I've seen The Little Mermaid. Never but seen The Little Mermaid. I, you know, he's, he's Sebastian and he's going through all the stuff from the humans. And yes. He's got like a oh. brush and he calls it a Dinglehoffer. All right. And um, yes. all of that. Yeah. Yes. Come on. I watch good movies too. Yeah. Not just. Uh, Things we find at the dollar store. That would be a heck of a life. Uh-huh. Uh. So, where can they find us? Are you going to say that again? Oh, uh, at the newlyteds.com. <laughs> you can find us there. All of our links to our other uh, formats, other than our Spoonflower account, which is the new uh, site that she's managing, which is specifically for patterns that uh, she is creating out of stuff that we've created. So then you can create. Yes. Or you can just buy stuff pre made from them as well, I believe. Like curtains and tablecloths and pillows but um and that's the yeah. like if you want to find me on there it's like the underscore newly duds um well we can always want we'll to add a link to our web page at some point we're gonna to be working to update our site so that uh, some of our more recent artwork is there and we're literally creating stuff every single day just it, about if you like horror so. and you like robots he has an amazing menagerie menagerie uh menagerie a menagerie is that like a menage a trois? <laughs> it's just like with one person. Or Menagerie or of teen small robots. Robots. Yeah. A menagerie. They're amazing. Uh, and there's yeah, there's a bunch of stuff. We've got so much back catalog of stuff that's been created that's not been uploaded yet. Yeah. Oh yeah. Soon. Yeah. He has like a whole haunted like marshmallow kind of thing that thing. he hasn't even released yet. It's a thing. It is a thing. And until next time. Keep it cheap and creepy. <laughs>